Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSU Inside Out. I'm your co-host, Janie Wunderlich. And I'm Cole Clementich. We are so excited that you guys are tuning in. If you have at all tuned in last year in the past years, you may have noticed we're in a bit different setup than we normally are. Cole, do you want to tell us why that is? Yeah, for sure. We are currently undergoing a facelift in facilities right now. So Hartnett Hall is now under new renovations. And so they placed us here, third floor of Swain Hall, and you will see us for the rest of the semester up here and for next semester as well. But Janie, let's focus on today. We have a mm -hmm. good show. What do we have we do. coming up? We have a lot of different things going on. The theme of the show is Not Stock. And what Not Stock is, it's a signature arts festival that happens here at Minot State every fall where lots of high school students get to come to campus and get hands-on experience with um, very well-known artists for the most part. We're also going to have a weather updates and sports, but before we get to the interviewees for Knotstock, we're going to hear what Knotstock is exactly from Wolf. Thank you, Jenny. If there's any weekend to get you out of the house, it's this weekend. Not only are there a lot of things going on, but Knotstock in particular is running right now in the Beaver Dam, now until Saturday. Knotstock is a celebration of artists from across the country, showcasing art, music, handmade crafts, and a lot more. You'll also find KMSU 19 there, so be sure to stop by, say hi to the friendly faces, and enjoy the live music. Not Stock is an annual festival held at MSU and, like all MSU Life events, free for all students. On the topic of music, Matt Allen, also known as Nerd D, will be in attendance, performing Friday at 8 p.m. at our Summer Theater, with free food there as well. We actually have Nerd D in the flesh later on in the show for an interview, so stay tuned for that. He is also going to be opening for Ludacris Saturday night in Minneapolis. The Sympathy Orchestra is performing Saturday at 7 p.m. at Anne Nicole Nelson Hall. I personally like going there because it's always good to listen to in-person talent every once in a while. If you're worried about academics or maybe you're concerned with time management, it may be worth looking into the Ready for Success workshop on Tuesday. The focus for the day is battling procrastination and pushing past it something that every student and working adult needs to remember in their day-to-day -day lives. You can catch that in the library's Academic Support Center at 2.30 in the afternoon. If you're interested in off-campus activities, the Norris Host Fest uh, starts on September 28th. The nonprofit festival celebrates Scandinavian culture and heritage for its 43rd year with fun activities, food, and entertainment, held in the North Dakota State Fair Center annually since 1978. Tickets start at $25, but the experience is well worth it. That's all for this week for MSU events. Next week, we'll wrap up September and kickstart the spookiest month of the season, which is always fun to look forward to. Uh, what do you think about it, Janie? Yeah, I am very excited. Thank you for sharing all that knowledgeable information, Wolf. <laughs> Minnesota artist Mary Bruno, a nationally renowned artist, of, um, is here to share her wisdom at Knotstock. She is the owner of Bruno Press, where she works to preserve the craft of letterpress. Mary, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yes, yeah, so we got to talk a little bit before the show. We found out you're from Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota. Yeah, go Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> so are you, would you consider yourself to be a Minnesota lover or a non-lover of Minnesota? Oh, I love Minnesota. I wasn't born there. Um, I'm a transplant from Pennsylvania. Um, okay. But you know, I was a little kid, little wee little lass, but I love Minnesota. I love everything about it. Yes, yeah. I do too. You, I always meet those people who some people are like, I don't even know why I live there. So I appreciate that you yeah. appreciate Minnesota too. Yeah, that's no good. <laughs> so you have your own business, website mcbrunopress.com, correct? correct? Yep. So why don't you, as a non-artist myself, tell me about like what is letterpress? What is the purpose of your business? What do you do with it? Um, okay, well, letterpress is uh, an old school art of... Uh, of putting ink on paper with um, type, wood and lead type, and all kinds of different, a um, lot of different mediums, but what I personally use is linoleum. Like maybe you did it once in seventh grade, where you carve mm -hmm. with sharp tools and maybe bludgeon yourself. A lot of my blocks have blood on them, but that's besides <laughs> the point. Um, so that's, that's how I create the stuff. It's mostly, um, you know, with paper. It's all printing on paper. It's not like silk screen where you can print right. on t-shirts and stuff. So it's it's putting ink on paper. Okay, so you have a piece of it here, I see, <laughs> and you created it for not sock. It's a little here. beaver. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I've actually, I told you before the yeah. show, but a lot of compliments on it. Like people That makes me very happy. It. And there's a pun. It says, damn it, I love printing. And he makes dams. Yeah. So it's not really swearing. That's yeah. So it's cool. It's fun. I'm having a blast. I think not stock is in is like so well done and so real, you know, incredibly dialed in. I'm here with Brad Vetter, who's another 
um, Rockstar printer and we're having a blast. I mean, there's so, you know, there's just so much going on. I'm, I'm really impressed with it, so I'm happy to be here. Good, I'm glad to hear that. So you've been to Knotstock before? I haven't. Really? No. Okay, so first time here. Yeah. What is your overall take on like the whole setup? Like, I mean, do you think it's set up well? Is it something that you've never been to before? Or do you think like it's beneficial for students to Oh my gosh, I, I, I've been saying this all day, how lucky these students are and all, you know, community of my not to have access to this because, mm -hmm. you know, when I, when Lori um, first talked to me about this, I knew that Amos Paul Kennedy had been here and Ben Blount and um, Miss Amy Jo, these are like people I admire in my craft. And so they're asking me and I'm like, dang, sure. Like yeah. I'm up with the heavy hitters. So yeah. yeah, I'm super impressed with all of it. Like I said, it's, I just feel like it's a well-oiled machine. You know, how long has it been going on already? Like 12, yeah. 12 15 years? Yeah, I'm very so, long time. So happy yeah. to be here. I think it's brilliant. So where did your um, love for letterpress come from? Was it just something that you tried one time and you're like, oh my goodness, I love this? Or was it something that you kind of had to grow on you? Um, yeah, it was, uh, I inherited it, my print shop from my dad. So it was something that I learned from my dad. It's a whole legacy story. It's pretty sweet. But yeah, that's basically how I got into it and how I fell in love with it. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. So what does your like day-to-day -day routine look like back home? Like, are you a full-time artist? Like, yeah. this is where you go. This is what you do. Yeah, what I work a lot. Like? As, a, as a small business owner, I'm in my print shop way too much. Um, I work mm. probably every day. But yeah, I, I go in, I have interns from the local um, universities that I've had for probably 10 years. Um, we work with clients, design posters, do all kinds of stuff, fill orders. I have a greeting card line and I, I got a lot of pokers in the fire, but yeah, I'm, I'm working there a lot. That's amazing. Yeah. So are you the only like full-time employee at yeah. your place yep. or do you have other people who come in and help you as well? Um, I have like maybe four to five interns a, a semester and then I have one part-time like admin gal that works for me. Okay, Otherwise, so you got a lot of me. people who yeah. like come in and are like yep. helpful, beneficial. Mm -hmm. Cool. So have you been to North Dakota before? Um, yes, but not this far to the other end. Not mine. Not. Yeah. Did you fly in or did you yeah, drive I flew. in? I flew. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> So when, take us back a little bit to when like you first started like enjoying this art type of thing. What was the one thing that you were like, I love this so much. This is what I want to do with my life and this is what I want to share with people. Um, let's see. Well, I'd say that like, you know, I, I inherited my print shop when my father, because he was a graphic designer. He's, mm -hmm. He was a lot like, like Bill, you know, like he's the guy that just all the students loved him. Yeah. Super cool guy. And that's, you know, his design and stuff was what got me into it. But he acquired all this letterpress stuff. And I spent a ton of time in there with him. I got a BFA in printmaking and mm -hmm. um, he passed away real suddenly. So that was like kind of what brought me back to St. Joe. Um, but I, I think like just being able to create something from scratch and to be able to kind of, you know, take the legacy that my father left me and then pass it on to other people. It just, it just feels like really important, you know, and I, I do. I love so it cool. every day. Thank you. Thank you so much for yes. sharing that with us. Thanks, buddy. Um, we appreciate you ha or like coming and being on the show. Good luck with the rest of Knott's Thank Talk. you. Come down. Get a beaver poster. Yes, beep, beep. go get one. <laughs> uh, once again, that is owner of Bruno Press, Mary Bruno. Coming up after Underwriters, we'll take a look at weather and an in-person interview with another Knott's Talk artist. We'll be right back. Thank you to all of our underwriters. Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB, 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, .9, Minot's Music Mix. SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's Classic Hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's Rock Station. East End, where the poor is worth so much more, located in downtown Minot. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. 
Nice impressions. No job is too big or too small. Located in downtown Minot. MSU Beavers Hockey. Online info at msubeavers.com. Forward communication. Connecting professionals in the Midwest. El Azteca. Authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. Minot Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. H Bar B Construction for all your oil field needs. Bears Cat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. Hello and welcome back to MSU Inside Out. As you can tell, the weather has been getting a little cooler as of late and some leaves are starting to change colors, which means Fall is around the corner with more. Hannah is standing by. Hannah, what do you got for us? Thanks, Cole. Yeah, well, fall is not only around the corner, it is the first day of fall today. And so like he said, there's going to be some cooler weather. Today it is currently 64 degrees. The high only got to 66. This morning it was a little bit sunny out, but as you can maybe see now, it's a little bit overcast outside. The low is going to be 48 tonight, not quite as cold as last night. Woke up with some frost on my windshield, so that's that's a little scary. But looking ahead to, or looking at the rest of the state, on the western side of the state, Williston 57, Dickinson 54. It's a little bit rainy on that side of the state. Uh, Minot, Bismarck 64, just a little overcast. And then on the east, Um, looking ahead to the rest of the week, we have today or tomorrow is going to be a little bit rainy, um, but the rest of the week is going to be in the 40s, so nothing too cold, just enough to kind of keep your windows open. Have some fresh air as you fall asleep at night. Um, and then on Wednesday, we do have the Norse Christmas Fest is in town and starts, so if you are looking for something fun to do, it should be some good weather to go ahead and get outside, get over to the Hust Fest, maybe take in some of the outdoor entertainment like the Vikings. But um, looks like a pretty good overall week, um, having some fun outside. Cole, was there any, are you excited for the fall weather at all? Yeah, thanks, Hannah. And once again, there, yeah, this is, it is getting pretty cooler. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Well, with that being said, Knotstock is back as Minot State's Signature Arts Festival features amazing artists and artwork around campus, along with musical acts. The artists behind Nerdy and opening for Ludarius, or Ludacris, excuse me, <laughs> this Saturday, Matt Allen joins us. Oh, what up? Uh, thanks. Thank you for being here, Mr. Allen. Thank Just talk you. about this experience. I yeah, apologize. No, I was right. Shout out to Ladarius. <laughs> yeah. So he is opening up for Ludacris this Saturday. Pardon me. Yeah, this Saturday in Minneapolis. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. But just talk about your experience on campus this week. What do you... What's it's it like being at Nostock? It's cool. Like, the artwork everywhere is, like, awesome. I got to make cool, like, screen-printed, letter-printed stuff. I got, like, a whole two posters, so that was pretty cool. Get to make it myself, which is awesome. You don't get to see as many, like, art things like this often, so it's cool to be able to experience it. Awesome. Love to hear that. So uh, just talk about a little bit about yourself, kind of some song work or some projects, you know, yeah. what do you got going on right now? Well, I just released a project called Heaven, spelled HVN, which you can find like all over. So any place you can stream your music, you can find it. Been making that for the last like year and a half. So it's been really powerful. We released it at First Ave uh, in Minneapolis, which is a really big, famous venue. One of the things that Prince made famous. So it was cool to be able to pack that out and just performing all across the country. It's my first time in ND, so we out here. Yeah, I love to hear it, man. So how awesome is it going to be for you opening up for Ludacris yeah. this Saturday in Minneapolis? I am beside myself. It is uh, amazing to be on stage, sharing a stage with one of like the pillars of the game. It's so cool. Oh man, that's that's got to be really exciting. You know, I'm, have you, I'm still freaking out about it. <laughs> have you had the chance to meet him yet? Is there anything that you know about him? I have him a not bit? got a chance to meet him yet. We're gonna meet each other on Saturday, so that's gonna be really cool. I'm I have a lot of Fast and Furious lore questions, so that's pretty much what I'm gonna be asking about. 
Hey, that's really cool stuff, man. I, yeah. I, I would be pretty excited for you too. Yeah, but uh, you. yeah, just talking more, you know, Ludacris, you know, you know, kind of what music does he play? You know, what have you listened to any of it? You know, what's I've it, heard what's a Ludacris song before, at least one or, one or two. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's it, it's great to have a hip hop legend coming and and being able to perform with them. And obviously, there's a lot of songs, some of which I I, I don't know if I can say the names of uh, right here, but <laughs> there are a lot of really awesome like pillars of hip hop songs that Ludacris has been a part of, and you know, famous actor. One of the one of the one of the Fast and Furious alumni, also in the movie Crash. You know, I think he was on an episode of Scooby Doo. Probably. Wow. You know, yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'm glad. I know. I, I know my Scooby Doo lore. So yeah, we are. We are here. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually did not know that. Believe it or not. So, so I'm, I'm learning something as well here, folks. Today. But uh, going back to you here. So there's a documentary on campus yes. taking place, I believe, tonight. Mm -hmm. Talk about talk a little bit about that. Black kid, White Town. What's yeah. that? So the documentary was created kind of over 2019 all the way through 2021. And at first it started off as just a documentary about an artist in Minneapolis. But after the murder of George Floyd, it turned into this entire comprehensive over the uprising and specifically my interactions with it as a protest uh, organizer and a member of the activist community in uh, Minneapolis. So it's, it's, it's pretty crazy to watch. No, I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be really good. I'm looking forward to it. You perform tomorrow here on campus yes. at 8 p.m. Uh, do you want to kind of give us a little wrap, maybe? Kind of sing us a little piece of what you got? Well, well you, know what? I, you know what? I think we got it. I, I need a beat. I heard that someone was like beatboxing earlier. Oh, yes. You got you to gotta, you gotta come over here. You got to come over here. Okay, and we're, we're going to do it. We're going to bring our cameraman, <laughs> Matt, over here. So, Matt, yeah. if you just want to kind of set him free up a little bit. Free so. free 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 so. Here you go. All right, here we go. However you got it, you hit me with it. Huh. Yeah. Woo. Here we go. Yeah. So I'm out here. It's Nerd D in the ND. Tomorrow night, yeah, you really need to see me. I'm really cute. Yeah, your boy is hilarious. On Saturday night, opening for Ladarius. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful job, Mr. Allen. That was so good. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Hey, this we is appreciate cool. We are then. ready to be here. Yeah. yeah, and there you have it. Not stock performer here, Matt Allen of Nerdy. He'll be performing tomorrow night at the Amphitheater, 8 p.m. When we come back from break, Parker is going to have MSU Sports, and Alex will have a live shot interview with one of the Not Stock representatives. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to MSU Inside Out. I just have to comment quickly, that last segment was absolutely amazing. i very impressed. <laughs> Head out and see him tomorrow night. You gotta go check him out. Minot State Fall Sports are well into season and Parker is gonna give us the most recent updates. It has been a slow start for the Minot State football team this season. After a 49 to 10 loss to Wayne State last weekend, the Beavers have fallen to zero and three on the year. 
They will look to finally put one in the win column this Saturday as they travel to Marshall, Minnesota to take on the Southwest Minnesota State University Mustangs. If they are victorious on Saturday, it will be their first win over the Mustangs in program history. Following their game against the Mustangs, the team schedule looks to get a little easier as neither of their next two opponents have a winning record this season. The Minot State volleyball team is also looking to pick up their first victory of the season this week. Despite their 0-11 record this season, the team has not lost hope for the year. They host the 4-7 Winona State Warriors tomorrow night. They will then also be in action again on Saturday night when they take on the 7-4 Upper Iowa Peacocks. The Beavers will have to capitalize on their upcoming conference games if they want to jump up in the NSIC standings. The men's cross country team recently made program history. In September 13th's NCAA Division II Central Region Rankings, the Beavers were ranked 8th. This is their first time ever being ranked. The men's team recently finished 2nd out of 9 teams at the Minnesota State University Dragon Twilight Meet two weeks ago. The highlight of this meet came from Beavers seniors Jacob Jensen and Nick Mariana finishing 1st and 7th in the 6,000 meter race. The men's team will be in action again tomorrow as they travel to Minneapolis for the Roy Griak Invitational. After going 2-1-1 one, one in their last four games, the Beavers women's soccer team is preparing for a stretch of away games over the next two weeks. The girls most recently tied with the winless University of Sioux Falls Cougars last Sunday. Winona, Minnesota will be the first stop of their road trip as they take on the Winona State University Warriors tomorrow at 5 o'clock p.m. They will then be in Iowa on Sunday when they play the Upper Iowa University Peacocks. So guys, it's definitely going to be a busy next couple days for Beaver Athletics. Oh yeah, for sure, Parker. And even next week too, women's hockey has their home opener against NAIT. Should be a lot of fun, Janie. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Getting back on track with Knott Stock, Alex Kuntz is standing by with Bill Harbort, the head of the art department at Minot State. So to recap, Knotstock is a Minot State signature art event that is held every fall. Students, staff, faculty, and people of the community are all invited to attend this annual event. I'm here with Bill Harbert, co-founder of Knotstock and head of the art department here at Minot State to talk about this year's Knotstock talent and guests. Hello, how are you? Good, thanks for having Thank me. Thank you so much for being here. So Knotstock is always invited at artists to showcase their skill and art. And this year I've heard we have many um, famous artists and performers on campus. Can you tell me who those artists are? Yeah, we have um, two letterpress printing artists, Mary Bruno, who we just saw earlier, and Brad Vetter. Um, they're working at the Northwest Art Center Gallery um, demonstrating letterpress printing. We have two screen printing artists in the Beaver Dam, um, Sarah Penier and Jason Abraham Smith. And then we have our musical guest, um, Nerdy or Matt Allen, who we just met. Um, and we also have Paula Simonson, who's helping us with our theater improv workshops. Wow, that sounds amazing. Um, how was it finding and contacting all of these talented individuals? I think the conversation usually starts shortly after Knotstock. So maybe within you know two or three weeks, um, there'll be some email exchanging. Sometimes students recommend some talent. And, and then it just grows and kind of crescendos up to, to when it happens every fall. So that does sound like it takes like preparation. So how long does it take to plan not stock? It takes a while. I think this is the 17th not stock. So it feels, it feels like we have a system, but at the same time, there are a lot of details. There's lots of planning. There's lots of logistics and, um, and we just work through, work through each one. So as the head of the art department here, um, what do you get to do at Knotstock? Do you get to walk around and enjoy the final product? Yeah, I do. I mean, I take in as much as I can, like everybody, right? Um, I try some things and, um, and really get to interact with students and high school educators and high school students and, and our guests, of course. And it's really, it's really a pretty rewarding time. Good. Um, we're all really excited here at the communications department and as you said people from the community can come um what are you most excited for these attendees to see and or experience here you know i think i think to gain some awareness um to look at art to see the importance of art the process how to make it um to to um to look at to look at 
images, to listen to music, and to consider, consider different points of view. Well, thank you so much for being here. We're all very excited to go and experience Knotsock this year. Um, make sure to visit. It'll be an amazing experience. I'm Alex Coons reporting for Inside Out. Yeah, thank you so much there, Alex and Janie. We've been having fun at Knott's Talk lately. We, oh, yeah. You're up there playing our only alternative music station up there, and it, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's cool seeing all the high school students just come in and like, hey, this is what my Knott's State's about. Oh, it yeah. gives us a good, a good taste, puts a good taste in their mouth. Yeah, good say. rap for sure. Yeah. We're going to kick it to a quick promo, but when we come back, Trevin is going to have a regional update on sports. Don't go anywhere. Destiny Hall, my major is broadcasting, specifically journalism. I've always liked photography. I just like to be that guy over the camera. I like interviewing the people. That's just something I always wanted to do. My grandpa always read the newspaper. So I wanted to take that and write in the newspaper because I know he'll be proud. So I want to get all my classes in right now so I can have a lot of experience in the field. So as soon as I get out of college, I can find the job that I really want to do. The people here are very wonderful. It's like a big family. They always have your back, and that's what I like about it. I'm Shalom Barron. I'm from Kalispell, Montana. I'm a junior. You do a lot of hands-on classes. I've never done newspaper writing until now. I think it's great to be able to actually practice that. When I graduate, I'll actually have pieces that I've written. I definitely am interested in politics in general. I've been trying to focus on things that really interest me. That way I have experience in the things I'm interested in. Hello and welcome back to MSU Inside Out. Again, great show so far, Janie. A lot of more mm -hmm. not stock stuff going on. How exciting has it been this week? It's been very exciting. I'm looking forward to just all the different things that we have going on left of not stock, honestly. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun here mm -hmm. rest of the week. And now we're going to kick it off to Trevin as the Bishop Ryan Lions went in an instant classic against the Ray Powers Lake Outlaws. Trevin has more. Yeah, Cole, it was an instant classic for sure. Now, Bishop Ryan football is now 2-3 and three on the season after losing an absolute shootout against Powers Lake. The final score was 46-39, to 39, and the Lions offense was fueled by quarterback Jeff Lundin. He led the team with four rushing touchdowns and looked good despite the loss. So they chose to have a tough schedule this season, so don't let the record fool you. This team is dangerous and has a chance to be great. Minot High has started out this year 3-1, and one, which is the best start to a season since 2017. Tyson Ruziska had two touchdowns and 150 rushing yards in their 19-12 win against their rival, Bismarck Century. Friday, Minot takes on the 2-1 Fargo Davies in a non-district matchup. A 4-1 start to this year would be a big step for the team, so this is an important game for the Magicians. Hockey fans, get ready as the Minot Minotauros open their season this Friday at the Mesa Arena. Puck drops at 7.35. The offseason was good for the Toros as they added last season MVP Braden Fisher to their roster. With a disappointing 28-29 and 29 record last season, this is a huge addition for the team and will hopefully spark a fire for their offense. Fisher and company look to start this year off right with a two-game series against the North Iowa Bulls. The MLB home run race is heating up as Yankees right fielder Aaron Judge is leading the pack with 60 home runs. The last time the Yankees had a player lead the league in home runs with as many as 60 was in 1961 when North Dakotian Roger Maris had 61. Maris was originally born in Minnesota, but his family moved to Fargo in 1938. He attended Shaley High School, where he set many records for both baseball and football. He is a North Dakota legend, and his record still stands for most home runs by a Yankees player. However, Judge has a good chance to break that record this year. Larry Sandy, a football legend for Velva High School, is in his 33rd season as a head coach. With over 300 career wins and nine state championships, it's easy to see why he's been there for so long. Before the game Friday, Velva is honoring Coach Sandy by naming their field after him. This is a special moment not only for him and his family, but also for the town of Velva. Those who live in Velva know just how important he is to them, and now his legacy will be remembered for years to come. That's all I have for regional sports today. Cole and Janie will be with you to wrap everything up. And as always, roll bees. Thanks so much, Trevin. We just want to say again, thank you to Mary Bruno, Bill Harbort, and Nerd D for joining us on our show. And we will see you guys all again next week.